Hi, this is N7LMV, Jerry. This tutorial is for Echolink users running the Echolink program in the SysOp mode. This allows an amateur radio operator to use his Echolink station with a mobile radio or a handheld. We're only going to discuss Sysstop settings. I've already went over all of the primary necessary settings for regular Echolink users in Echolink 1 video on YouTube. So basically once you validate your Echolink link or your repeater that would be KB6DOW-L or KB6DOW-R. Once you have validated your call sign through echolink.org, then you will be able to use your link. Now what you need to do is first you need to put your echolink into sysstop mode. And let's show you what we need to do. You're going to put yourself in sysstop mode for the very first time before you even get validated. You're going to then enter in your call sign dash L. Then you're going to put in your password, your name, your location, and your email address. You're going to click OK. Once that is done, the list is going to refresh and it's going to tell you that you need to go to echolink.org to validate that call sign before it is functional. And there is a list of ways that you can validate your call sign. Once your call sign is validated, you will get an email saying you are accepted with that particular call sign, be it a dash L or a dash R. Okay. Now that you've done that particular uh, setup, then you're going to need to go to your audio and make sure that you click on the correct audio device for your computer. And the same with your output device. Okay. So once that is done, uh, you can click OK. And it's very important that you have the correct input and output device or your computer is not going to receive the signal. Okay, once you're done with that, that's all you need to do in system setup. Okay, anything else that's listed in system setup needs to be referred to the Echolink 1 video by N7LMVJES. Okay? The next area that you're going to go to, and this is where it gets really entailed, so play, pay close attention. You're going to go to Tools, and now that you are validated as a dash L or a dash R, the system settings will be highlighted. Unlike if you were a single user, this would not be highlighted or darkened. So you're going to click on the Sysstop settings. There is many tabs here that you might find interesting to set. Keep in mind each interface may have a different setting than what I have on mine. Okay. Now I'm running a WB2REM iLink board interface between my computer and my radio. Okay, and it requires that I'm in Vox mode. Okay, <clears throat> your Vox delay, you will have to adjust that to accommodate your interface. Next, that you're going to do is you're going to go to the TX control. And once again, each interface has different settings. 
Mine requires an ASCII, an ASCII serial, and I am actually on COM port 3. Okay. I do not need to have the key push to talk on local transmit set. Okay. The next item, this is the fun item. This is the DTMF control. This is where you can send dual tone multi frequency tones from your mobile rig or your handheld to control connecting and disconnecting and quite a few other options to make your remote uh, communications with your Echolink program more enjoyable. Okay, Now for my interface it tells me that I need to be in external for the decoder to work. Now sometimes it can work fine on internal but if you don't want to have any DTMF commands being received by your uh, interface you can disable it. Mine's internal. Okay. Now I leave all of these items here what is at default. I do not log all commands I do not use auto mute or during disable during push to talk. I don't use any of these particular items. Now, the advanced key is of importance. If you're not decoding your DTMF, which would be listed down here, all the tones, it will show what tones it's receiving. You will have to go to advanced to adjust the uh, fine tunings and you can change these values little by little. Okay, once you think you have it set right, you can click OK. Okay, the other item is this window right here. Now this is really, really fun. Okay, let's say you wanted to connect to a certain node Let's say you wanted to connect to node 5661. That would be the 9 Hotel 1 Bravo Bravo Sierra repeater. You would then remove this C by highlighting it. And as you've seen, I was pushing my left mouse button to highlight it. And I'm going to delete it. Now I'm going to go to the connect area and I'm going to put in a C there. Okay, so now the computer knows that when I push C on my mobile rig or on my handheld and then the number 5661 it will then connect to that node. Okay, now I can leave the disconnect as a pound that means I want to disconnect from that particular node, the 9 Hotel 1 Bravo Bravo Sierra dash R, I can push pound and it will disconnect me. Let's say you have multiple stations connected to you. You can push pound pound to disconnect all the stations that are connected to you. Okay. You can bring your link down by adding any value. You can say uh, 111 will bring down your link or you can go A11 whatever you want to do for your link down okay to bring your link back up you can go A222 or 222 whatever you put in here will bring your link up okay if you want to be listen only off you will enter in 0510 or you can change the value for example we can say uh, Bravo 11 so if we push B11 it can put you in listen only off and if you wanted to go uh, listen only on then you can go B12 your option you have the ability to 
put whatever values you want. Me, I just leave them blank. Okay, now play info. <clears throat> if you push the asterisk or the star, it will say whatever info is there. It might say echo link running. Okay, now I normally don't have anything in profile select, so I just delete that. I do not use query by call, so I just delete that. I delete a lot of stuff because it ain't necessary. <clears throat> so I just go and delete them all. Now, random link. Let's say you dial in or press on your DTMF pad 01. It will connect you to any random link that's out there. That's the L section. So it's any mini miny mo catch the link that should show. I just basically delete that. Same with random node. I just put a lot of deletions there. Okay, now reconnect. If you want it, you can change this to any value. It could be A A B B B1, A1, star 1, pound 1, whatever you want to put in there. But what reconnect does is let's say you were connected to the <coughs> node 9H1BBS-R and you got disconnected for some reason, you can enter in 09 as this example is and it will reconnect you to that last node or to the last user that you were on, whoever you were connected to. And status, if you type in 08, it will tell you if you are connected or disconnected. Okay, now we're gonna go to station shortcuts. Now this is beautiful. You can say add a new station and let's say we wanted to add 9H1IA-R. So we're going to type in uh, 9H19H1IA-R. <clears throat> now you have to put in the call sign complete as you want. If you just type in 9H1 one IA and there's no existence of that call sign it's not going to connect you it will say not found but we know that this particular node is there and you can go okay the connect code that I want for it will be uh, alpha 1 1 huh? let's put it in there alpha 1 1 so if I push a 1 1 it's going to connect me to 9H1IA-R and you can add new one. Let's say we wanted to connect to K6FN. Okay, we go here and we say, okay, let's say we want them to be A12. Okay, <clears throat> let's make it A, <clears throat> A12. Okay, and once you're done, those nodes are ready to go. So if you type in A11, it's going to connect you up to uh, <clears throat> 9H1IA-R. If I type in A12, it's going to connect me up to K6FN. Okay, so let's say you wanted to remove them, a particular one. Let's say we wanted to remove him. We just remove them. We wanted to remove him, just remove, or you can remove all. Okay. Now, the next one that we're going to go to is ident, okay? <clears throat> now, it can be identified with Morse code or it could be identified with a voice. Or you can have an external file. Let's say you went here and you wanted it to say, yabba dabba do, this is KB6DOW. If you have that WAV file, it's set, okay? Now, Identify each time a station connects, you can have that checked. Identify each time a station disconnect, you can have that. 
or at the end of every transmission I wouldn't do that and you definitely want to have for uh, while active okay so that's the ident portion options I always have it say first connect conference only connected include the call sign last conferences only include uh, if the station uh, is busy then it won't identify you can play a welcome message to connect in stations so you can put a check mark there and you can go to a file and say okay we want this wave file uh, hey welcome to the KB6 DOW node okay we'll cancel but we won't do that uh, you can have a courtesy tone to go beep beep uh, let's see I basically leave the rest of these items alone okay signals these are all the signals that are uh, up and down and let's say you wanted to have a custom for this link down you can go custom and select the wave file and say link down so uh, we'll just go by default okay R E M T this here is a very interesting one this one here is if someone connects up to your Echolink station uh, via the web they can uh, have access to uh, your uh, node and then RF info I don't even change any of this here I've never figured it out okay that pretty much covers <clears throat> we understand that that pretty much covers the sysstop settings of how to run Echolink under sysstop mode thank you for watching this video enjoy your day